Hello, hello, hello. Right. My machine is telling me I'm live. So hopefully you can all hear me. Um, I'm going to just double check that my um, microphone is except yes it says it's so you should be able to hear me if you can't please do put a message down below and i will get to it quickly i will just see if if i go off to the right here it's because i'm actually looking at my other computer to see that i am live yes i'm live yay okay cool you have my full attention well i say that i have a very a tendency to go rambling off but primarily i am here today as the guest artist in the blooms this month and um, today I promised I would go live every um, Tuesday at 11 o'clock so here I am and it made sense to show you around my studio and what I have on my mat and kind of the things which I'm thinking about doing and some of the inspirations and things it's almost like um, I suppose uh, not a day in the life of a, an artist but perhaps 30 minutes <laughs> Um, I won't um, let you um, hear what goes on in my head because that can be quite frightening sometimes but um, yeah so um, anybody who has seen um, Monday's technique video which was about the armature let me um, show you that so far I have added um, some fibers to the armature and it most definitely is in the ugly stage so let me just show you that yeah doesn't look anything like a tiger does it no and I think that's one of the um, biggest issues that people struggle with who are sculpting and fiber sculpting is for a very long time it doesn't look anything like what you want it to look like there are all these in-between stages and you just have to keep your vision of where you're going which I think is why I do so much of the research and looking at the um, body and everything because I know I can visualize where I'm getting to even though I know it doesn't look like it at the moment and it's quite interesting because the tiger which you know we're going into the year of the tiger I was born in the year of the tiger so it's actually very special starting the 1st of February um, even though I'm still doing the, I, I mean, artists call about laying paint down on a canvas. This is kind of the equivalent, which is basically throwing wool or attaching wool on the um, armature so that you have a base that you can then start sculpting um, and actually start properly doing what you want. It's the under, it's the under layers, the under layers that I'm doing. But even though I'm doing that, I've started looking at um, other pictures and photos and videos because each section that you go to, you kind of obsess. So like when I get to the paws, I will obsess with the paws and how furry they are and how big they are and where the claws should be and whether I'm going to make a big deal out of it or not. And same with the face, you know, and the eyes. I think each area I will obsess about it um, and get that bit but right. And then, of course, there's always the coming back and doing the overall. You're always coming back and readjusting and looking at the whole. So, um, yeah, anyway, so that's a little bit about the tiger, which is the project that I'm carrying on through the month. But I thought it was worth actually also saying that um, I never have just one project on the go. Um, and I might go over to my um, other camera for a minute because I can possibly take you around and show you um, a couple of bits. So let me just trans over to here. Yep. And I'm going to swiftly turn the camera around. There we go. Right. So, oh, I've just suddenly thought that's not necessarily a great idea because my... Um, my microphone is here so perhaps if I'm still on the microphone but you can see over there my elephant um, I wonder if I could I could possibly oh no you are quite zoomed in aren't you okay you can see my elephant over there and I am currently planning on doing mama and baby to go with the elephant and that long piece of wood that they're on will be the full mount that they're on will be on and you can see Clayton the wolf is there next to the elephant and he still needs a little something special and I haven't 
quite decided what that's going to be yet, but that's in my mind. The day um, it happens, you will all know about it because I shall no doubt squeal with delight that I have finally decided what that will be. So, um, yeah, that's all. That's all in my head, let's say. So whilst we're on this camera, let me, um, you can just about see. That's my, um, it's not um, uh, a weapon of torture. That's actually my carding machine, which I'm not holding this very well, am I? It's a bit wobbly. There we go. Try and keep it still, Steph. Um, depending on whether I'm mixing fibres or whether I just have got some fibre which I don't think is straight enough for me to start wrapping round. You know, it might be a bit clumpy and I have to put it through. My carding machine is a real treat. If I'm actually taking wool from a fleece as well, then um, it obviously needs cleaning, it needs um, picking, as we call it, and then carding. The picking machine does look like a weapon of um, torture, but I'll show you that on another day. Okay. Um, that's just that's just a little bit of display of a few pieces but around here you can see this is all wool by the way and alpaca um, and I think there's even some camel here all wool fleeces in the corner there still waiting to be washed masses of it wool everywhere if I show you my desk so this is where we've got the tiger on the mat as it were and I'm using as you can see not white as the core I'm using um, a yellow core which basically I've bought and I'm assuming um, it was wool which is a bit clumpy and they've dyed it because I've put this through my carding machine um, it's basically cheap wool, but um, it's quite nice to have a colour in the centre, which you can bring out with, with a reverse needle, which is another technique I will talk about on another occasion. So let me just show you briefly round, because you're looking at my microphone, to be honest, um, round the other way. Um, and look at that glorious tin. Steve and I um, bought that when we were at a show at Milton Keynes and um, I just think it's glorious, absolutely glorious and I have no idea what I'm going to do with it. It's German from the Schmidt um, stable who used to do toys so I have yet to translate the words which are on the lid but we'll see, we'll see. But as you can see that's my um, kind of tall trolley. Um, which may look a little bit like a hairdresser's trolley because I have hair straighteners and curling tongs etc etc in there because I use those as well but that's probably um, going too far to mention all those things today all in one fell swoop but anyway so there we have I'm going to bring us back bom 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 now I'll bring us back by bringing you back to me there we go I'm back Ooh, that was a bit I'm not quite sure how um, how useful that was or <laughs> whether it was a bit whoa going too fast type thing so um, anyway so that's my studio which I have my various uh, well, wool everywhere really and inspirations but I was saying to you that I don't just have um, one project in my head and obviously I'm thinking about doing the um, elephants and well I will be doing the elephants but I'm thinking about how I'm actually going to be doing the medium and the baby one um, and how that will look but um, an animal I've had in my head for a while and I think I showed you the armature on another um, live is the pangolin um, who actually is um, very endangered um, so I would really love to um, help show the plight of that. I've just realised that my heater's on. I've got to turn my heater off. Okay, there we go. I'm not sure if that was distracting or not, but there you go. Um, 
so actually I'm not sure whether um, anybody is able to comment because I'm looking at the blooms oh no Steve's yes fantastic Steve has commented tidier tidier than normal yeah you're right the studio is tidier than normal because as you well know I did um, tidy it up a little bit the other day um, now I know that uh, some people hate a scruffy desk and it just um, it wouldn't work for them but I have always worked in what I consider to be organized chaos um, I'm not gonna lie and say I know where everything is because I don't um, but I've got a pretty good idea of where everything is I suppose that's probably the most accurate way so uh, anyway so talking once again I told you I get distracted really easily um, one of the projects that I am doing as well as the pangolin and I'm going to do a red panda so let me show you that's obviously not the cutest picture there are some really cute pictures of pandas now the bonus that we have is just up the road in Burford is it the Cotswold I think it's oh my heat has just come on again excuse me And she's back um, in the um, Cotswold Animal Park anyway Wildlife Park in Burford just up the road they have red pandas and um, so I've got an advantage actually going to see them and how they move I say how they move they sleep a lot so um, the really interesting thing is that red pandas were discovered before the giant panda and in fact they're not related at all um, which is interesting that they've both been called pandas for that but um, there are two main types um, one which is from the Himalayas which I love the idea of the Himalayas I don't know why I have a kind of romanticized version in my head of the Himalayas um, and China and is it Bhutan not very good with geography not very good pronunciations either but anyway is there's a strip and um, I know conservationists are trying to join up this sort of strip of forest because at the moment it's quite separate and they don't really join. But anyway, um, there's a difference between the two types of pandas. The Chinese pandas have the really red markings and the Himalayan ones have a lot more white on the face. But looking at it, it's the female which has a lot more white than the male. So, so I'm torn between my kind of love of the Himalayas but one thing that I did think was they do eat a lot of bamboo um, but they also eat flowers and one of the things that that region is really famous for is for beautiful rhododendrons so I was just kind of thinking ooh, I could include rhododendrons in it that's where my head is you know once again I start off with these ideas and then like anything you have to sort of like go down a funnel to really find out a lot about it to find out whether you really can do that or not but I will be doing the armature of the um, panda very soon maybe even today because um, like I said I have lots of projects on the go at the same time um, and I really do, like I will do a part of the tiger and I'll get to a point where I think I just want to do something else and it's not because you're bored with it but you just feel like you've given everything to that project for that moment and some days you can go for hours and other days you're just like I just the inspiration and this might sound a bit arty and I don't often think I'm like an arty person um, but I do feel like some days you just the inspiration just isn't there for that particular piece so you move on to something else um something else I was going to say about the red pandas which you know as I say I get a little bit obsessed about these things um are the paws no jokes please Steve about pauses right let's have a look can you see those they have fluffy feet on the their fluffy bottoms of their paws and they also have a false thumb so it looks like they have six toes, but they don't. They have, I think, oh, can I point there? It's like a full thumb. Helps them actually like hang on to trees and things. So that's, um, oh yeah, here we go. This will show you, I think. Look at the different um, types of faces. So 
these are like the um, Chinese and these are the Himalayan and that's the female with more white so the um, male red panda still has quite a bit of red doesn't it so I might end up going for the male red Himalayan panda yeah these aren't my drawings by the way I found them on the um, internet um, freely available I'm not stolen anybody else's work but uh, yeah the pangolin um, if you don't know what it is it's kind of it looks like an anteater um, no, I've put the um, armature away um, it looks like a kind of anteater shape and it has scales and unfortunately the reason why it is the most trafficked animal is because of those scales and the scales are made of keratin and um, Chinese medicine um, uses it medicine it's uh, you know that's I am let's go to the plant shall we for medicine <laughs> that's all I'm saying um, so yeah and there's many different types as there are and um, pangolin in I can't remember which language I can't remember which language but in a language pangolin means one that is curled up because that's what they do they curl up you know with their scales you can imagine so some of them are um, tree hanging so they have really long tails to hang from trees and others and they they run and they get up on their hind legs and they're just gorgeous little creatures I think on my Instagram feed a bit further down there's a picture of a little baby one and I think he's almost green um, his scales so I think I'm gonna have quite a lot of fun deciding how my pangolin's gonna look yeah I've got some great ideas but obviously um, at the moment I'm also considering everything to go on my tiger now if uh, anybody who knows me they'll know that I go on and on about my little um, notepad which is called remarkable which I'm just looking to see I've written some notes to make sure I've mentioned everything that I was going to that pangolin oh hummingbird so uh, yeah I um, did a fabulous hummingbird for a friend and the lovely story behind it was my friend wanted me to do this hummingbird for her friend and it was in memory of her friend's friend okay so we got the friend for the friend of the friend who'd passed away now I knew all three of them which was lovely so um, I really really enjoyed that project now I have I'll show you that when I often when I do something I make um, a couple of different versions of, uh, arm, of the armature stage and this is sort of like the reject stage that I did of the hummingbird um, so I actually I'm just using this to sort of demonstrate something to you so the reason why I did it an extremely long was because I was trying to figure out how this particular hummingbird that I did was going to actually be eating out of a flower um, and then therefore would be suspended I won't bore you with the detail of what I ended up doing but anyway there's this wonderful um, hummingbird I'm trying to remember the name of it now the racket tailed white booted hummingbird and basically has fluffy trousers round his feet and he has this really long tail you can't see really long tail and this little racket and they're kind of green um mainly in color but they have this really luminous area and i just i've had a picture of these hummingbirds um on my computer for a while and i've been a little bit obsessed with it so i really feel like i want to do these two now the female hummingbird doesn't have the um long tail it's always the way isn't it what is it with the females in the bird kingdom perhaps they just you know not showing off let's just say that um and you think well should I do two or whatever but then I haven't been able to find out enough about the hummingbirds to know whether um the male and the female do a little dance because I've I have finches I have um zebra finches and um community finches and silver billed finches and they do fabulous little dances when they when a mate I just love it I mean it feels a little bit voyeuristic but just oh it's just hilarious the little dance that the male does and then the female usually goes no 
and <laughs> it takes a while. So I wonder with hummingbirds whether we get that, um, which would be quite nice to sort of visualise a dance or something. Um, because like with my hairs, you know, that's a male and a female, but that's where the female's gone back off. So which isn't quite so romantic. So perhaps I'd um, like a bit more of a romantic notion when it comes to the hummingbird, which would be, yeah, good. Now, what else did I have on my little list that I suddenly saw and I thought I've forgotten? Oh, just about fibres. I know I've mentioned a lot about um, different fibres that I use. Um, and like on this occasion... I said I wasn't sure for the tiger whether I was going to be using wool or whether I was going to be using um, the recycled plastic because I really love the idea of the recycled plastic fibres which look just like um, in fact let me I'm going to dash over there a sec because that's where they are I say dash I'm not dashing really now oh let me show you not very good is it wandering off okay <laughs> so it's worth saying that this is how the plastic fibers um come and they're fabulous but they're quite squeaky but they do um felt i put my little inverted commas up because strictly speaking felting is with wool fibers because I think I've shown many times before my um, picture of fibres, if you put them under a microscope, they've actually got scales on them. Well, well she's looking around now. Ah, she, talking about herself in the third person. How bizarre is that? Yeah, it's the right way around. Right, okay, there's my little head. Right, so we have, no, this end stuff, wool finer wool but they still got scales look alpaca there's still scales but they're just not very um cashmere have bigger scales silk none whatsoever than in cotton polyester so um i haven't got a microscope which might surprise you because i seem to have everything else um i haven't put these under um a microscope so i don't know but they felt they absolutely, felting is where the, you're compressing the fibres and they literally lock together and it's those scales which lock them together. And when I use my needle and I felt them, they lock together because my sea turtle was as hard as a hard thing on National Hard Day. Um, so anyway, I had to decide whether I was going to use these. But to use them to wrap around an armature and in, to the degree of the tiger where you need to do quite so much of it um i have to card them so that they're nice and long which is fine because i'm able to do that but it's just they go hard too quickly and i explained that when i'm doing this one because he's going to be um crouching down drinking water so at the moment i'm producing him in his standing up position but i need to keep these soft See, so they're quite all soft at the moment. They've got a big fluffy, fluffy bottom. Um, because then I'm going to bend him into his position and his muscles are going to move. And that's when I'm going to make him hard. And I think if I used these fibres at the start, it'd have gone too hard too quick. And I'll say no more about that. Um, now, I've just thought a very exciting moment for me is... Oh, I've got some, so just a second, I've got some comments. What is the medicine for? Oh, pangolin is a Malaysian word, thank you. Oh, hi Claire. Hi Castle Evans. The medicine, yeah, um, what the pangolins and the medicine, I have no idea. Um, Chinese medicine, I mean, Chinese medicine often, um, they have one thing which they put in lots of different um, forms. They like, they have their jars of all the individual things and depending on what ailment someone has they mix them all together so i'm assuming it's many things that's my limited knowledge of chinese medicine okay so um yeah that's the answer to that oh and steve says pangolin is a malaysian word thank you it's malaysian for one that curls up which is lovely so and i've said hello claire so um yeah one thing which arrived. So one of the processes that I go through when I'm creating my sculptures is the mount. And I love to use um, 
driftwood. Okay, so we just found from the beach. Now, they're not always pieces that I've been down to a beach and found because I don't live near a beach. But what I do do, there are many people um, on eBay who live near beaches and they collect them and sell them. So I scan continually. And especially when I have a project like I know about, like my tiger, who's going to be leaning down into a pool. So I saw this piece on eBay and thought, oh... I think that's going to be perfect and it arrived yesterday so let me share that with you okay let me put it up that way so can you see my vision which is my tiger will be crouching down and then head bending down into where the water will be okay and we're hopefully going to be doing something very special with the water but that has to be experimented on and we'll be coming to that but that's like a really important part to me it's like the elephant that you can see over there when i found that really long piece of wood and immediately i was like family of elephants um so i need to do mama and baby um the um clayton my wolf i've already found a piece for that and it's that point where you go yes found it that creates there's always a piece of wood that is perfect um which has landed on a beach so once again a bit of recycling love a bit of recycling let's have another look. okay so yeah um where was i before i suddenly went off on a tangent about my so I'm just I'm looking down um, at my um, little remarkable in case I've got anything else that because I don't want to um, blurt it all out in one go. I'm going to come live again next um, Tuesday at 11 o'clock again um, and talk some more about the tiger and anything else that has come up. But on Thursday this week, I will be hopefully might be the it'll either be the pangolin or it'll be the red pa panda but i'll do a little presentation of my thinking process what type of pangolin what type of red panda whichever one i've decided that i'm going to do um, and on friday i will put up a past project which might be the hummingbird if you know of any of my past projects that you want to know a bit more about shout well type <laughs> type loudly um and um, i'll get back to you okay so wow that half an hour went quick didn't it okay so um that's my brief little introduction to um my studio and what i've got on my mat as i say at the moment um if you've got any questions if you want to look if you're looking through this again or on replay if you've got any questions put them below um, and I will answer and this is also going live on YouTube so anybody on there has any questions I will come along afterwards and explain so unless oh Claire a bee well funny you should say that Claire because I've been thinking about a bee because I previously did a bee and um, it was quite tiny not obviously life size because that would have been minuscule and I don't do things that small um, but I did a little bee on a flower and it was, gosh, it might have been in my first year of needle planting and um, somebody bought it and it is, is no longer with me. But I was thinking the other day how I could actually do a big version of a bee, um, but I haven't got any further with it. So that's mulling these things sometimes because another project which is mulling in my mind which I think I'm going to try and get ready for our show in September at the Contemporary Art Fair in Sandown Park we've got one in March but we've got one in September as well is the Phoenix I'm doing a, I've, I've had this project in my mind for a very long time and I now have a new technique for feathers which I learnt through Sarafina, who I am a certified. Oh, I've got my certificate, guys. No, I've got to share that. Where is it? Where is it? <clears throat> I 
Nope, I've lost it. Damn. Now I've lost it, I'll have to show you another time. I've got my official certificate that says I am a certified instructor for Serafina. But anyway, so I've learned how to do these um, feathers in a different way um, because I have my own technique for little things like the hummingbird because they're quite... And when I did my um, kestrel, which you can't see at the moment, but it's there because they're quite small. But obviously in the phoenix, they're going to be these big feathers. So I'm very excited about that. So, yeah, that's mulling away in my head as well. <laughs> so, yeah, so I'm going to... Um, got these lots of... So many, so many projects, so little time, kind of. <laughs> anyway, so that's brilliant. So that's... Um, yeah, I'm over my 30 minutes now. So um, I won't outstay my welcome. So um, thank you, everybody, for joining me. And as I say, please do put comments below, any questions, anything you want me to um, say, because I've got this whole month that I'm in the blooms, um, sharing my projects, processes and everything else. And on Monday, I will show, uh, I don't know what process I'm going to share on Monday, but that will be a video, um, some sped up, because some of this takes a long time. <laughs> OK, so brilliant. Have a great rest of your Tuesday or whatever day you're watching this and um, I'll see you very soon.